Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. We're filming some things here to help you uh, with correcting your roses or potential problems and I get quite a few of them. So I read your comments and then, uh, you know, if we have certain problems and stuff with painting the roses, we film the answers for them, okay? So one I've been answering quite a bit is consistency of the paint. And that is really a key point in what I do, okay? So let's paint a rose. And this time let's concentrate on the consistency of the paint, okay? We'll talk about other things, but let's talk about consistency. My same normal palette I use, I kind of squirted out of my uh, Darya Light Yellow there a little bit, so, but that's okay. Hansi Yellow, Darya Light Yellow, Yellow Oxide, Burnt Sienna, Naphtha Red Light, Pine Green. This is my Cerulean Blue. I've been using that lately. Uh, this is the Quinacridone Violet, Red Violet, and White. And what I'm going to do is, this is my normal um, board. This is an MDF or hard board that you could use. I gave it a coat of medium white, but I think I'm going to change that uh, to a gray here, uh, a more neutral color of a gray. So I'm going to take out some uh, burnt sienna and some of my cerulean blue. This is a gray that I really like to use. Go a little heavier onto the blue side here. And then some white with this. And we'll find just a real good gray that I want. A little more cerulean. You use more cerulean than you do the thalo because the cerulean is not quite as powerful as the thalo. So I don't mix it up real, real super well in my brush. And I'm just going to model through the background here. And we'll probably add a little bit more. We're, this is just a practice board anyway. I mean, but you know, here's the thing is, I'm a professional artist and I sell my practice boards too. <laughs> so, you know, I always try to make them every time that I paint something, even if it's a practice, I always try to make it as nice as I possibly can because there's people that like to buy those and learn from those. So I try that as well. So here's a nice kind of a neutral gray. We'll um, take some smaller little touches of color here. We'll go back to my three quarter inch here. Take some smaller little touches of color. And let's push in a little bit of blue and green into there. Just pretty little colors here. And usually when I'm doing something like this, I'm starting to think, okay, what is it that I'm, what is it that I'm painting? I'm making my plan and I'm, you know, I'm working the background and stuff here. And I want that to dry fairly quickly, but I'm working my plan as uh, what it is that I might be doing. Now this background, I'll uh, manipulate a little bit more. I'm gonna just rinse out that big brush and set that here to the side since that's my big glazing brush. So anyway, so I'll, I'll set up to here. Now, I want to talk about the consistencies of the paint. We'll let this tack up or even dry here for just a minute. I want to talk about the consistencies of the paint. I paint with really thick paint. And, uh, you know, we, we always say, you know, as, as longtime teachers and painters, one of the biggest mistakes that young painters make or ones that are switching medium, especially coming over from oils to acrylic, is you tend to paint too thin. And it's the amount of paint that you use. We tend to try to make stuff paint easy, and that's not what it is. I put on paint as thick as I can, and I push my fingers into it to move it so I get movement. If my paint's too thin, it blends too fast. Uh, let me grab a board here, and let me just show you here while this dries up. Let's just take a look at it here. Okay, if I take my yellow, just say take some yellow oxide here, I'll thin it with a little bit of water. So it's nice and easy to apply here like this. Okay, so it's been thinned with a little bit of water. And then I'll take some white and I'll do the same thing. A little bit of yellow on my brush, well, I'll do this. If I go to push this with my finger, see how it instantaneously becomes one color really quick. Just three strokes. I went one, two, three, and it's blended. You get no movement to it whatsoever because the color's so thin, there's no resistance in it, so everything flattens out. Okay, so a lot of you were saying that your roses and stuff look appeared flat right away. Well, probably because your color's too thin. Now, let me do it this time with a thick paint. So I'll take the thick paint. 
I'll put a strike of some real heavy, let's put down, strike a real heavy thick paint. That's what I like. I'm going to wipe my brush, not add any water or rinse or anything. I'm going to push down the white, a heavy stroke of white. Now when I push, you see the movement that I get? See the difference here? See the difference here? It does not blend. You get this beautiful movement of color here. So if I want the yellow to go, wipe my finger here, if I want the yellow to go more that way, I pull it this way like this, and I can pull it and push it back, and I get that beautiful movement. I don't get this flat look. I get this movement look. And as I, if I decide I want more white, well, I'll strike more white, and then I'll pull the white down into the yellow, or I'll pull it like this, and see, I'll get that beautiful movement. They're not blending like this, okay? Now, is it more difficult to paint with a lot of paint? Yep, until you become, until you become comfortable with it. If you're coming from bottled acrylics, which, you know, I painted with bottled acrylics, wrote books with them, did DVDs and stuff, and I had to totally change the techniques I paint with bottled acrylics because they're made to be thin. Because a lot of people that painted with the bottled acrylics craft colors. They're lower quality craft colors. Nothing against them. They're made to do crafting products. They're not made to do beautiful artistic florals. Because they're too thin. They don't hold a body here. Like this. They have no weight. Whereas what this is, it has a lot of weight to it. And I can get a lot of beautiful, I call it the marbleizing of the flower. I can get a lot of, I can track a lot of beautiful movement through. And let's say I, you know, I touch a little red violet over here. I can push that up into this yellow and look at the beautiful movement I get through here. See that? See that beautiful movement that's in there? That comes from high quality and thick paint, not thin. You're not painting for easy. You're painting for art. Okay, so we tend to put our paint on. Now, when you look at that white that's there, you can see it's really, really thick. Okay, so if you want to get this type of look, this beautiful movement, see there's no movement there. That's flat. So if you want your flower to have lots of movement to it, you need more paint. And that's what all the masters said. I mean, all of them, all of them that I have read and studied. The thing is about, you know, when do you go up to get to that level? Is boy, when you start using a lot of paint. Because what is it that drives interest to everything we do? Paint. Okay. Is it harder to paint with more paint? Yes. It is. Okay. So let's paint some fun flowers. And let's just really put out a lot of... A lot of color, a lot of paint, a lot of things going on. Let's take some of my favorite working colors, some Darulide, some, some um, Quinacridone, some white. Let's put out and let's just start. Boom. Let's, and we're not going to, we're not going to, um, I'm not going to, you know, go into concentrate and paint this flower. I want you to watch the consistency immediately wherever you see this. You see this modeling of the color here. Now, if I want to really get a lot of movement into the center, say, of my design, I'll take a little burnt sienna, a little yellow. What I've got to do is build up some color here first onto my flower. And so I'll build up some more color onto my flower. This is stuff that I do a lot in, in practicing. And is it hard? Yeah, because you've got a lot of color on there. But watch what happens. Let's build a little more yellow oxide down over here. I'll get some different variations of some color, a little bit of dark you like. Now, as I come in, I'm going to tap in some really thick of that quinacridone. Now, watch what happens as I push this around. I'm going to get all of this lovely movement to my color. See, that's, and is it happening as much as it can? No, because it's going to take me a while to build color. And so I'll put on some, some uh, quinacridone like that, maybe take a little bit of my, of my yellow oxide and my Hansa, and I'll pull it back the other way here. I'm going to start building the amount of paint onto my rose and so then I'll, I'll put some 
of the yellow here. Once I have enough paint, I can start pushing it. Now I did this dark background so you can kind of see. If I push too hard or if I don't have enough paint, I will go right back to my background, see? Because there's not enough paint there yet. And that means I need more. And that's what shocks a lot of people is how much paint I actually paint with, which I do a lot. Now, so I start to put this, these flowers, these petals on wherever I want, whatever I want to do. Let's just strike some more of the center here. And so a lot you'll see me in many videos, especially in my books, you'll see step photos of me doing this for half of the flower. All I'm doing is building and building the paint so that I give myself something to work into. And I build and I build and I build and I build the color up here. The richness of the color, the color itself. This is what's going to give me. So when I start to push, I don't see that background anymore. Does that make sense? Now, sometimes I like to see that background out on the edges. So that's when I can take a little water and push like this. And I can bring the outside edges of that background right through. See? But right here in the body of my rose that I really want to see, I start to build paint. And it gets thicker and thicker and thicker in color. I'll take, and I could use, you don't have to always use your finger. Let me rinse this out for a second. Use just a little water. Just draw a little water right across there and you'll see the uh, the background start to come through. But the second that the background um, right up in here stops and I don't see that background anymore, then I know I myself, for me, and with my brushes and what I like to do, I know I'm just about ready to start painting. And when I can take a beautiful yellow strike like this and lightly pull it across like that and create this lovely movement of color into the bowl, that's when I know I'm about ready to start my painting. Now, I haven't even added the high contrast colors yet. so. I'll start here like that and building it. So this gives me the shape of my rose. Now this is where I say many times in many videos, I've built up the rose to this point. And the paint is, it depends on the background, depends on what you're doing. Darker backgrounds are harder because you have to push back that darkness. Lighter backgrounds are easier because you don't see that, the, the light background as much as you see the dark. The what it takes is some time to build that. And sometimes I'll say, you'll see, you'll watch in the video, I want you to hear when I say that. You hear me say the paint's too thick, I've gotta let it, let it tack up so that I can paint on it again. Because when the paint is so thick and it's not tacky, see out here where it's thin, it is already dry, okay? In here, it's still wet. It's still wet paint right up in here where it's thick. Some areas, that's a that's a little tacky, you can hear it, okay? But when it's really, really thick, it's harder to paint. And so usually what I do is I'll wait for just a few minutes for it to thicken up, for it to stiffen up or get tacky on it. And then it becomes easier for me to paint on. So I like to paint in acrylics that are almost dry. That's where I really like. There's a lot of people that think you can't, paint unless it's wet. <laughs> no, that's not true because we're tonal painters. We paint in tones, okay? And watch the videos and stuff that I'm doing to, to show that I'm doing tones. Now, let's lighten up and let's just take a strike, okay? Now, there's enough paint. I can see enough paint here and into that red violet that I can push those together right now and get some beautiful movement to that, to that petal, some beautiful soft movement. Still a little bit, see that little bit of the background coming through there. I'm just right about at the right amount of paint. And it takes practice for you to know, but I know where I'm at with my colors now. So as I put colors on here, as this, I have enough to push and to soften out and do whatever I want with um, painting this rose, okay? But I like thick paint. I like thick paint. And sometimes, this is what 
what freaks people out. I, I do this demonstration in a lot of my classes, live classes. I'll just go like this. I'll push color right on here. And I'll push the, the red right into there right then. And a lot of them go, oh, man, you just, you just ruined the rose. No, because I'm an artist, I look at what my colors need. And watch what happens if I touch this just a few times. Right out through here to touch that. Look at the beautiful movement. I'm going to use a half tone here. The beautiful movement that I can start uh, this rose having and color that I can start this rose having by putting on some really thick colors. Here, look at the beautiful color, depth, and movement. Let's grab a little bit more of this dark. Drop it right there into the center. I don't have to do too much to it. I'm watching my colors, but as I'm putting on more colors, look at how much more life that rose is beginning to have. These are all things that you, you is it hard? Yeah, it's hard painting with this much paint. But it's this is what they say. What differentiates a master from a person who is, you know, if I'm, well, let's just do this. Let me just take this, a little bit of our yellows that we're using. Let's apply it out, out in here like this. This is what a lot of us do, okay, And when we're learning. And then we start stretching our colors out and pushing our colors out. And this is your nice, weak rose compared to your rose that has a lot of punch and power to it because it has a lot of color to it you see it has a lot of paint here and so yeah is it hard to control that amount of paint yes but see i can just lightly push and grab some movement there grab some nice movement build up this this I'm reading what's happening to my rose now. I hit a little bit of that red. I just, I'm just going to incorporate that. Do what I call incorporate that into the front of my rose here. Grabbing what my rose needs. You've got a lot of power into that right now. Let's grab a little bit more to the back. Let's just push some of this around. Let's paint a rose that has a lot of beautiful movement to it. Let's take a light. Here, now that I start to build up all this paint, I can start doing really pretty things into this rose. Here, we'll push some of that in. Here, and sometimes I'll do it four, five, six times, each time building a little more paint, a little more paint, a little more paint. I paint with a tremendous amount of paint. A lot more than what people think. That's how I get the... Look at how easy it is to get that movement into the rose there. It's easy because look at how much paint's on my brush. See that? And I'm going to take the strike of that petal that's right here and push that petal right into that rose and get some of this beautiful movement. Now, I can... If I do this, if I work that too long on my palette, I get one color. And so when I strike this, I get one color. See that? So that's why I, I try not to work too long on my palette. I like different things, so I get some streaks and different colors coming through here. Okay? I like, I like that kind of stuff. So here comes a lot of paint. Here comes a lot of paint. A lot of paint building up into this rose. Let's put some pretty kind of pinky peachy colors on, on to the bottom side down here let's just drop some of these in we'll walk these right into here I'll just pull it see I got that thick paint here I just have to pull it across a bit to see and I'm using quick strikes of the of the brush pull that paint across I'm watching it and this is this is what I do a lot in the evening times. I practice and I try different colors and putting different things together to, to make pretty colors. And um, I like that real deep, heavy. See that big strikes of color there? Look at how much power is in that. Let's put a big strike of yellow right across there like that. Now, let's just run through a couple of times and soften those together just a bit. And look at all of that beautiful color that you now have there. Is that hard? Yeah, that's really hard. That's a lot of paint. 
That's a lot of paint that you have to think, but I'm thinking about its movement, where it's sitting, its positions. And as I build more and more here, look at how the rose starts to come to life. This is why you you see so many of like the Ala Prima and Premier Coup Masters, they build and build and build. Even like when they paint a portrait, they build and build and build and they go back over and cover it up again and build and build and build. They're building the color. They're building the thickness of the paint. And, you know, I came from in the 70s and the 80s and stuff, we did a lot of what we call stroke roses, just strokes for the roses. And so I was just like, okay, you paint a rose once and it's done. Well, no, you don't. You know, after I started watching more and more what all the Prima painters do and portrait painters do, wildlife painters do, they paint those areas several times, I started to realize that I needed to build the color into some of my flowers. Build it and build it and build it a little bit more to get more and more and more. And look at that bit of red coming right out there like that. You can't always control it because it just happens. Whatever thick paint's around and moving, that's what's going to happen. But look at the, the energy, the, the life that this has. Now, if I want to get some more pink, let's get some more pretty little pink here. Let's mix up that tone. Pretty little light. It's going to be a little bit lighter. And let's just strike it right across there like that. That looks pretty good. Let's put a little darker right down through there. and Just pull those in and see what those marks look like on that rose. Look at all of the coloring that comes down through here. It's a lot more depth to it than what you have here, see? And it takes time and time and time again to build that. There is, there is not a rose that we can't fix and do and push more because I just build and build and build. I always consider them just gigantic base coats. We can do anything we want. We're artists. We can do anything we want. I'm going to put a lighter petal. Strike it right up there like that. Push that light right in there like that on that. Let's fix up the front of this. Pull that across. Let's go more pink, cooler. Pull down here, pull down. I've got a nice body of color onto this rose now. Um, always go back, look. Do you need to restate your bowl anywhere in there? Do you need that dark? But you see, as I'm... And it doesn't make a difference how thick my paint is. I can go back, put more on. Work right through this again. I have to work my brush now softer because this is really wet. So I hold my brush more flat and pull across like this. And look at the beautiful depth you get in through there. Let's put a little yellow right in through there. Look at the beautiful colorings that you get in there. And that's the movement that you get in there. So much more. Then there's two flat colors. And this is what the masters do. They build and build and build here. We don't just do it once. We don't just do it twice. You know, I'm, we'll build and build. And I want to take that one little light right out right there. And we'll build. Well, I'm going to go lighter. I'm going to go to a clean spot here and start building some real light, soft lights here. Put those right up onto the front, pull that right in towards the bowl. Softly push that in there. I gotta be a little soft because now my rose is thick. Now my rose is finally coming off the surface the way I want. It's a darker surface, so I really have to paint it quite heavily to get the rose to come off. Let's take a strike of some more white right across the front there. That's pretty, I do like how that just dives right in there like that. Let's take a bit of this light right around to the back side in through here, push a little bit of that nice soft movement inside that rose there like that. Let's take a softer yellowy pink right here and just pull across. See, I, I try all different kinds of things and if I don't like something, if something bothers me, I'll just go reset it again. Reset the back in there again. How many times can you do it? How much paint do you have? Does that make sense? How much paint do you have? So when I really start to paint 
you know, really advanced roses and go and go and go. I paint with a lot of paint. I, you know, and I build and I build and I build. As you build, the difficulty of painting it, get, you know, goes up, okay? It becomes harder to control because you have so much wet paint. See, every time I touch this, if I touch a little bit, I'll pick up all kinds of stuff. There's violet on my brush. There's all kinds of stuff that I picked up with these little movements. But now look at this beautiful little movement I can get down here on this side of the rose. All these little petal movements I can add because my paint's so thick. Now, many times when I'm painting with the acrylics, what I like it to do is to start to dry up just a bit. When I find that I've got my paint so thick that I, it's, it's hard to control, it's becoming too difficult, I let it start to sit and tack up and get sticky so it doesn't move as easy with my brush does that make sense so if it's if i'm having starting to have a difficult time controlling i'm not here on this one because i just used the soft fusion brush just a little bit of movement and i can come in and soften i can add a little bit of the bowl petal or a little bit of the idea of the bowl right in there i can restrike but if you're having a difficult time because you're not used to using that much paint, then let it tack up a bit and it will become easier to paint. It always does and because the paint does not move as much as it starts to dry up. That's why I love the acrylics. So I can paint and paint and paint. I never, in the years that I painted in oils and stuff, I never really liked the fact that, you know, I'd come back in and touch and something underneath would move. I like it when it tacks up, you know, and I can redraw or do something. Setting petals like this on top of all this moisture is not easy because, see, it drags. But, see, that's a beautiful look that I can get right there onto that petal. It's a pretty look. And, you know, what do you do with that? It's going to take a little practice for you to understand just what it is that the potential that that wetness and thickness of paint has to creating beautiful flowers. Now I took out some of the bowl. I'll just take a little bit, just pull back. Or I know there's a shadow underneath there. I can push and bring that shadow back up because I know that's there. I know that shadow is there underneath. And I can soften and I can, and I start to build and build. So even though I'm, you know, you've watched me here now use a good tablespoon of paint, putting on the light colors of this rose and you see it's still building and building. So when someone says, oh, my paint's too thick. No, your paint isn't too thick. It's you're just getting it thicker than what you're used to painting because maybe you're used to painting stuff real thin. And this is where I'll say to you, paint thicker because thicker roses like this have more interest. We can add some more deep color. Let's Let's get a little more color contrast into this one. Add a little more bang, a little more beauty to it. Just a real difference, different look. And this is what the beautiful thick paint can do to start to start making a beautiful uh, rose. So I'll quit playing here and we'll go into adding some pretty stuff here. And, but this is what I do, guys. This is what I do a lot at, at night or I'll put in a good movie that I want to and I'll play and I'll try. I'll paint. When I paint commission pieces and stuff, I'll try different kinds of color combinations. I'll try different things. Pushing here, pushing some soft green over the one side of the rose there. Um, Maybe I want to grow this rose out to the outside here. I'll put a softer yellow like this. This is another thing that I do that I haven't uh, shown too much. And then I'll negative paint in and create the softness or little bits of the edges, bottom edges of the rose here, different ways. There's thousands and thousands of ways. <laughs> You know that you can do and what an artist does is we read we read the rose and we read the what the ways that we could paint that rose 
we try different things and a, a beautiful artist will always try and there's a lot of times where it's not easy look at the beautiful yellow you can put in there on that side of the rose and make a a real pretty rose we could take a bit of this light and close off this edge right over here we can take just a bit of this dirty white here Add just a mark or two of it out there. If it, I could build up the front of this rose a little bit more. I mean, there's so much, but you've watched me paint and paint and add paint and add paint. And I dug up just a little bit there. I like that, but I can just take a real soft stroke of it and pull it out and soften that out too, like that. So there's a lot. Now, if you know, if I'm painting a larger tray or commission painting or, you know, big canvas and stuff, I might let all of this tack up while I go work on other roses here because it does get harder to paint as you get a lot of paint. It does get harder. But so I might let it tack up a bit and, you know, then come back to it. But you can see, see, I can still paint. It's thick paint. This is a thick this is a really a great thick paint exercise and um, you know if you really want to learn how to control your painting and, and this is some of the stuff I do is start to paint a thick painting like this and just keep building it and keep building it and paint right through your frustration but watch watch what's happening to it as you're painting it what is happening to the colors how much pressure is it taking on your brush to move color you know learn that what's happening as it starts to dry up a bit and get sticky and all that kind of stuff what's what's happening to it learn it's all part of practicing and learning and because see what happens is this is what happens okay we all we all start out at the same level and uh, you you start to paint and then you got to practice I myself, I forge right on into frustration because frustration means I'm right at something where I'm going to learn something new to do, okay? What generally happens, what happens with the majority of my students and what happened with me for a long time, was as soon as I start to get frustrated, I would back away back to what I knew and then I never grow. Does that make sense? So I go back to what I already know or what is more comfortable. No. What you do if you want to do an exercise like this, I mean, look at the power of this rose, this rose has right now, coming off of that background, compared to this one, okay? And so if you really want to know, know something like this, paint it and keep building it and keep building it and keep building it. Go right through that frustration and see what it is. Let some of it, let a few areas of it dry up and see what happens to it. You know, uh, what happens to the uh, to the rose? What happens to your, you know, to your petals? Is it easier to put on the petals at that, you know, at that particular point? Find out some of those things and grow. Grow. Don't fall back on what you know as an artist. Don't fall back on what's easy. Push through it and keep trying it. So here's the consistency that that I use, okay? That's a building of it. Now let's just look real quick here. We'll, let's just go through here, paint one right down here. So I, I generally, I'll start putting on color, boom. And then I'm gonna put on some contrast here. We'll put on this darker, and let's push this one on right in here. Boom, here that one goes in. Now, as I push, I can see the background through there. So I know that I have to be careful. My paint is a little bit thin. I'm gonna want this one to be a little softer, so I just won't build it up quite as much. I'll start to build up the light color here, and maybe I'll build up my yellow oxides back down through here. Build that up a bit more, but I'm gonna start building paint, and you're gonna see the paint get thick. It doesn't get as thick as what you see on there. See that nice, thick, thick, thick color? I'm nowhere near that. But I, I'll start building. Now this is a secondary rose. I don't wanna build it quite so much as this one. 
but I will build some. We'll push some color around here. Push in that back, that back part of the of the flower there. Let's take a bit more of our our reds. Push that in. Second, I get that thicker red in there. Look at what it does for the contrast of that rose. As I build more color, I add some white. White gives you opacity to your to your flowers. So I'll add just a bit. Push in and out. You should be able to see. Paint on a darker background. Okay. That is a good way to see whether or not you're using enough paint. If you push and you push right through to your background, you're too thin. And the majority of you will be too thin. I was for the longest time. It took me a long time to figure out how much paint to use. But then I'd watch these, you know, i watch all these beautiful a la prima painters paint it again, paint it again, paint it again. And they're painting in oil, so they're actually building, building, building color. It's, it's, it is not uh, dry, it's building. And that's what we do, right? We build and build and build. So I'll build some, build this one side here that I want it to come up in front of that one that's right there, see? And we build that. And we can make it a little bit lighter. I don't want to make it too much lighter because I want the other one to stay, have the power to it. But we'll push a little bit more, push a little bit more here, right in like that. We'll push a couple of little things. Let's take a little dark, push that right back in here on that side here. Let's take a little bit of yellow and that quinacridone and push it over here. Just a little bit more paint. A little bit more paint brings it off the surface. Gives it just a touch more to it like that. And it comes kind of pretty. Let's put just a bit more light right in here, like a secondary little petal. Down like that. That makes a nice one here. Uh, this, since I have that rose there, I'm going to turn this one just a bit here. And why I do that is because they were this petal was lining with that one that was at that angle and I don't want them to come at the same angle so I'll pull this out this way a bit and see that I'll put some dark and I'll pull out this way these are all things that I practiced and practice so they're here in my toolbox I know I can use them I know I know that I can use them if I need them you know in, into a painting I know how to reach back into there and grab that technique and pull it back. But you can see I got lots of paint in there to paint a pretty set of, uh, of roses here. And then we could uh, come out here and we can take a little blue with this and, and uh, you can negative paint out. You can, you know, go grab your, your stems and stuff like that and start those in, right? Go grab some pretty little uh, leaves, start some of those out, start some lighter, a little bit of blue-green, lighter blue-green would be pretty on this background here. So a little bit of our cerulean in that lighter blue-green color would be pretty to start some of those. Maybe I always like to add some of the rose colors into my leaves because that... Uh, creates that harmony that we always look for in a painting, right? So set that up, grab a bit of those, set these beautiful, I just start watching color, you know, and sometimes I like to, to do that with um, a bigger brush too. I like those colors, bigger brushes, pull colors out, and Push some of that around here. Grab some of this. I just like to play. So, and now when I'm out here and I'm doing some of this backgrounding work, I'll use my colors thinner. Does that make sense? So they don't have as, so the rose has the thickest color and the most power. And, you know, if you're, and if you, seriously, if 
you have painted for a long time, and I painted for years with bottled acrylics, and wrote, like I said, wrote quite a few books and DVDs and stuff like that. And if you're coming from those, you're used to really thin paint. And so to be able to get to the thick paint is going to take some practice and some frustration that you have to get past there. Um, if you want to do, you know, these these beautiful looks that it's paint, you know. And the best way I described it to a bunch of my friends when I was going out this direction, I was like, what is it that gives paintings interest? Paint. So if you want to have more interest, you need to use more paint, right? And, uh, you know, of course, there's contrast and things, but that is, in the reality, that is so true. I'm going to make a real dark, dark, cool color is our red, violet, and pine green. That's our darkest of the dark. That'll put a little bit of punch right into this, just a bit here, right into some areas. But you look, now this is, the, this is what makes a rose real pretty. Look at the depth of color that's there inside of the rose. And see, even with this dark that I have here, I can push and incorporate that right into the lost edge of that rose over there. I could use a bunch of different techniques. I can put a, a uh, kind of clean my finger here a little bit, put some uh, water here onto my finger and push and move those colors together. And they'll move really nice because there's lots of paint there. There's lots of paint to move to go into that side. So if I want to drag some of that darkness right down or that rose right out, I can do that fairly easy there with that. So consistencies of paint, it's hard. Uh, it's hard to use a lot of paint. And as, that, as you build and build and build, the technique itself gets harder and harder and harder. And that's why I want you to listen to some of my videos. So, you know, we talked about petal shapes. We talked about restating those shadows and stuff. And I want you to listen now in my videos. Go back and watch them again. And where I'm starting to say, I'm making that paint too thick. Or you'll hear me say something like, that's a little thick right there. I'm going to let that tack up and go to a different place. While that starts to tack up and get a little sticky for me. Because I like sticky paint. I like the control that sticky paint gives me. I love the look of thick paint. I love the look. Look at how this dries. That's a beautiful movement in a rose. That is not. See? That is not. So you want this. I call it the marbleizing of the rose. You want that movement that's in there. And that movement, that movement that you do should always kind of follow the shape and flow of your petals in and out here rounding with your bowl smaller here going out so the movement of your finger moving it moving it moving it here and i can always come back if i decide and this is the beautiful thing guys and it's even if this is dry right in here i want to reset this back edge of this petal I'll, I'll know I'll take yellow oxide a little bit of red violet because I know that'll work in there. I'll set that in there. Let's set a little red violet right in there like that. There's enough paint in there right now that I can push and make a nicer, softer yellow back there. And then if I wanted to give more of a, a petal edge back there, I can just use the petal edging technique, just draw my brush around like it's a petal edge and push that in there as well. Let's just draw that just a bit more right in there. And I'll pull that in. But look at the coloring that's in there. That's what makes it pretty. And then I, I you know, I love the color of quinacridone and darulide together. I love that as like an intermediate tone to sit in between some of those areas. I like that tone, that movement in there. Isn't that pretty? That's a different look that I can add I'll increase the quinacridone just a bit. All this looks good because the thickness of my paint in there. I've got all of this modeling in there now to do that. I don't want to add too much back here. Maybe a touch of that quinacridone. Look at that quinacridone in gold. I mean, and the, the, the uh, darulite yellow. It's just such a pretty color. It works so well. 
But once I have that body of this color up, that's easy to do that kind of stuff, okay? So painting with lots of paint is not an easy thing to do. And it takes practice, and there's frustrating moments. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of frustrating moments, okay? But you push pack that, and I want you... I want you to embrace frustration, just like I do. Embrace it. That means you're doing something new. Now figure it out. You know, figure it out. You know, you got yourself into position. This is starting to get frustrating. This is hard to work out. Slow down. Start thinking your way through it. Mine is usually, we're acrylic. Let it tack up a bit. Let it get a bit sticky. Then it won't move around so much on you. Then get back into your half tones. Get back into your, you know, your shadow, bull shadow or something to fix up your shape. But don't thin out your paint and make it lifeless, okay? All right. Try the consistencies. All right? We have more. I'll see you on the other ones.